And we're up, we're running, we're going, we're starting our live stream here. Here we go. All right, let me make sure I get all the windows up so I can see your comments. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me on a Monday, on a photography slash Photoshop Monday. All right, as soon as we can get this one up, we'll be good to go. All right, Michelle, Raul Creations, Colleen, Mark, John, welcome. Uh, let's see if I can get some folks over here. Vicki, I see you over there. Alan, Rochelle, hello, hello. Balder, this window took forever to load, but <laughs> welcome, Victoria. And welcome everyone else that I didn't see your name or didn't give you a chance to give you a personal shout out, but thank you for being here. Welcome. Happy Monday. Let me just click one more button and we can begin our stream. All right. So with that said, my name is Terry White, worldwide designer, photography evangelist for Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you live this Monday afternoon in Atlanta. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at kind of a beginner topic, kind of a photography, but not so much photography, more of a Photoshop topic for um, what happens when you get stuck, like what happens when something is not working as you would expect it to. And there's like seven, which I'm going to actually end up doing eight or nine, but seven common things that happen in Photoshop to beginners. And they just like, they go to do something and the brush isn't working or they go to do something and something's grayed out in the menu and they go to do something and it won't move or the tool won't work as expected. So just seven common mishaps. And if, you've, if you're a longtime Photoshop user, you've experienced all these and you probably have solved them all. But if you're just starting off in Photoshop, these are probably some of the things that you're going to run into or have already run into. And maybe you got out of it. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you quit the program and relaunched it and that kind of fixed it. But just some certain things that we all run into all the time. And it's usually because something is selected turned on an option chosen you know whatever and you just don't realize that that's going on maybe it's something you forgot to undo or or redo or change so forth and so on so rather than talk you through it why don't i walk you through it why don't i show you what these things are so let me make sure i got everything going here before i switch over cool let's go ahead and switch over to the computer I've got Photoshop running in the background. I'm just going to go ahead and open up a random image. It is Earth Day, so why not charge an electric car while we're at it? Um, and I'm going to show you the number one thing first that people run into that they don't realize why it's work, why it's happening or why it's not doing what they want it to do. So, for example... You were making a selection at one point. You were trying to select something. So I grab quick select. I'll make my brush a little bit bigger. There we go. And I start selecting this charging handle. Okay. And I get the charging handle selected. And then um, while that handle is selected, I can do anything I want inside that handle. As a matter of fact, by selecting that handle, I'm telling Photoshop, Anything I do, only do it in that area. Don't do it anywhere outside of that area. So if I were to want to paint it, uh, if I were to grab a brush and I were to uh, make my brush bigger, there we go, and I were to start painting stripes on it, those stripes cannot go outside the selected area. So that's what a selection is all about. And we covered this when I did the selection tutorial, um, I think it was last week. However, what tends to happen, though, is that's purposeful selection, meaning you meant to select that, therefore you meant to do something with it, run a filter on it, do something. But what happens a lot of times is an accidental selection, especially if you're on quick select. So if you're on quick select and you click anywhere, I clicked on that little piece of tile on the ground and I didn't even see that I did it. Now I'll go to try and do something like dodge and burn, like I'm trying to to um, to burn in this area of the mirror to make it darker and nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. No, it's like it's not doing it. It's not letting me do it. It's not. So the tool's broken. It just doesn't work. The tool is fine, but you've told Photoshop, hey, only allow the burn tool to burn this piece of tile. And now that piece of tile keeps getting darker. But you didn't really mean to select that piece of tile. You, you didn't even know it was selected. 
So whenever that happens, here's the quickest, easiest way to get out of it. Don't spend your time looking around for what might be selected. Whenever I go to use a tool and it's not working, before I even like glance at the image, it's like something selected, I know it. That's why that tool is not working, or at least that's my first troubleshooting method. Don't go looking, just on your keyboard, Mac, hit Command D, PC, hit Control D. That will deselect whatever is selected. Then you, you're free to start trying to use that tool again and start trying to edit whatever it is you're editing. So the very first thing I always do when something is not working, Command D, deselect. Because usually, nine times out of 10, that's why I can't paint. That's why I can't run a filter on the area I'm doing it on. That's why I can't do anything. It's because I've accidentally selected something or accidentally forgot something was selected and left it. Here's another case where that could happen. Um, here, let me undo, undo, undo. Well, that's selected and that's obvious. I can see it. But sometimes you might want to hide the selection so you can see the area around it without the what we inf infamously call the marching ants. So you hit Command H on the Mac or Control H on Windows. Now you're really in trouble because it's still selected. You, all you did was hide the selection and now you don't even see it. So even if you did take the time to look around, you're like, well, I, I can't. I can't burn in this cloud in the mirror and I don't see anything selected because you hid the selection on purpose or by accident. So again, even if it's hidden, I don't have to unhide it first. All I do is Command D and then I'm free to work in the area that I want to work in. So just remember, <laughs> uh, nope, it was not just you, Rod. It happens to all of us. And like I said, I don't even think twice about it now. Something's not working. Command D then try it again. That way I don't have to worry about spending time looking for it. Okay, so that's a quick one. Now, one that wasn't on my list originally, so this that was number one. Number one and a half <laughs> is that you accident, you accident, you, not accidentally, you purposely wanna move the entire image and it's not moving. Now, Photoshop has learned that this happens all the time to you. So here's what happens when you go to do it now. You get a dialog box. Hey, you're currently trying to move the background. The background is locked by default. It has a little lock on it, so you can't move it. But luckily, the little dialog, the new dialog box is asking me, hey, do you want to convert that to a normal layer so that you can move it? So that's a one and a half because at least now it helps troubleshoot it for you. You're trying to move something that's not moving. Is that layer locked? Now that's only going to bring up that dialog box if in fact it's the background. If it weren't the background, here, let me go ahead and convert it. Now, and see it moved it for me. I can go ahead and move it around now. If I locked it on purpose, meaning I'm locking the movement, now I can't move it and it, just, it will at least let me know, hey, could not move the layer because, could not move the, use the move tool because the layer is locked. So it's letting me know with this one, one, 1. 1.5, <laughs> letting me know that if you got something locked, it will help you out by bringing up these dialog boxes to help you. In the past, it would just beep at you. It would just not move. At least now it's kind of alerting you. Okay, so let's move on to number two. Um, this one happens to me a lot, especially when I'm trying to brush something. Um, so for example, let's, uh, let's make a selection. All right, so let's select the charging handle again. And, oh, and I don't want that much of it. There we go. So I got the, the charging handle selected. So now, and I'm on a layer. So now I'm going to go ahead and say add a mask. And that will mask out the rest of the image so that I only have the charging handle. Now the rest of the image is still there. And we've learned that if you're on the brush tool, I'm on the brush tool, I'll just hit the letter B. And as long as I'm on black, that will continue to mask so I can paint away parts of it if I want to. Great. That's working the way it's supposed to. And if I paint in white, hit the letter X to go to white, I can bring back parts of the image that I want. So if I, if I didn't want to cut off the cord, I can bring back the cord, so forth and so on. Great. That works the way I want. However, if your brush was in a blending mode that doesn't do that, 
then you're, you're, you'd are you're be brushing and nothing would happen. So for example, I'm on the normal blending mode, but if I switch to something like overlay and I try and paint away this handle with black, nothing's happening. And I'm like, the first thing I go look at, I'm on the mask, I'm on a paintbrush, I'm on black, why can't I paint this away? Why is this not working? It's supposed to be working. I checked all three things that would normally make this work, except you're on a blending mode for your brush. You switch your brush back to normal. So that's, in other words, that should be the fourth thing you check. Switch your brush back to normal and it will work. So whenever something like that doesn't work, check the three things. I'm on the paintbrush, I'm on black, I'm on the mask, but also is the brush in its normal state. Yes, it's now in its normal state, so now the brush works the way it's supposed to. Okay, um, let's go on and go to number three. That was number two. Number three, I'm going to um, temporarily disable that mask. No, it's not working. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Hold on your shift key, disable the mask by clicking. All right, uh, let's say that we add a layer. Um, and again, I'm just adding random layers here. So we're gonna add the suitcase and we're gonna go ahead and scale the suitcase. Oh, scale the suitcase down, there we go. And we're gonna move it to where we want it to be. I'm gonna say, let's put it right there. And it would have a shadow and all that, I get that. Um, and so that's created the second layer. And let's go ahead and add in a third layer just for kicks. And we'll move that further up and scale that down even further. Great. So now we got, we got technically we have three layers. Nine times out of 10, when you're trying to do something, like for example, I'm let's say I want to now select that handle again. So I grab my quick select tool and I start trying to select it. Great. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why, why is it why is it not selecting just the handle? Why did that not work? Let me, oh, what? Whoa, what's going on? I'm on the wrong layer. So whenever you're trying to do something to, um, to an area and that area is not selecting properly or not painting properly or not filtering properly or not doing anything properly, when you have more than one layer, make sure you're on the right one. So if I go back to the layer I'm supposed to be on and make that, oh, sorry, <laughs> make that selection, it makes the selection perfectly because I'm on the right layer. So I'm not selecting those empty empty pixels of the other layers. So Alan's asking, what's the benefit of hiding? Um, simply visually to get it out of your way. Like I, I'm trying to maybe get something close to the edge. I'm trying to move it. I don't want the marching ants in the way. So literally Command H is simply just hide it visually so the selection is not distracting me while I'm trying to do whatever. Especially if you're trying to paint near the edge, you're trying to make sure you fill it in, you're trying to do everything, get it just the way you want. Sometimes the marching ants can be a distraction. So that's why Command H exists, to be able to hide that selection so you don't see it. All right, um, so make sure you're on the right layer. The other one, so we talked about masking. So let's bring back the mask again. So just hit the letter, uh, I'm sorry, hold down the shift key, click on the mask. Um, you'll notice that there can be two things on that layer selected. So let me zoom in and show you. This white dotted or dashed outline means that the pixels are selected of that layer. If I click on the mask, the mask is selected. If you're on the wrong one and you're trying to hide or you're trying to mask, now you're adding paint to the layer. So for example, Let's say I was, I was going back to this and I said, hey, I need to show more of that, um, show more of that cord. So I go to my white paint and then I grab my paintbrush and I do what I did earlier. And now I'm painting white. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, wait, wait, what's happening? Why am I getting white? Or why isn't the cord showing up? Because I'm painting on the actual layer not the mask. So let me undo, click on the mask, and then I can paint, oh, wrong color, sorry. I can paint accordingly. I can bring out the color that I want or bring out the object that I want. So um, make sure you have the right part of the layer selected. You want a mask, you're on the mask. You want to add pixels or do something 
uh, or change the actual uh, image, you're on the pixel part of that layer. All right, next up, um, that was number four, mask versus pixels. Number five, and this is, this is just really a keyboard mistake. Uh, let's say that you're on the suitcase layer, and by the way, name your layers so that you'll always know what they are. So that's the suitcase layer, yep. And for whatever reason, I accidentally on my keyboard, I hit the letter Q. Nothing visually will happen on the image, but what you have done just by hitting that one letter, and thankfully it's Q, it's not a letter we type often anyway, but if you hit the letter Q by mistake, what you've now told Photoshop to do is to go into quick mask mode. So now you're painting in red, even though your foreground color is black. Oh, you say, well, wait, no, that's not my foreground color. Let me choose green. It's supposed to be green. And then you paint, and now it's like light red. What? Wait, no, stop. Why is this red? Because quick mask, which is the letter Q, is not for adding or changing pixels. It's a selection method. So, for example, when you hit the letter Q again, it will show you your selection that you made by accident when you were in quick mask. Another dead giveaway, so how would you troubleshoot this besides the fact that it's painting red? Don't even worry about the color that it's painting or not painting or not doing or whatever. Look over at your layers panel. If your layers panel, if the layer that you're currently working on turned red like that, that means you're in quick mask mode because the minute I hit the letter Q, it goes back to normal gray. So if you're in quick mask, and I'll deselect, even if you haven't painted yet, if you hit Q by accident, your layer will turn red. So that way you'll know, oh, wait, hold on, stop. That's not supposed to be red. Hit the letter Q, get out of it. So Quick Mask has been around for decades. It's an old way of selecting, but the keyboard shortcut still works. So therefore, if you hit Q by accident, you could be in, in, a, in like a quandary of why stuff isn't working. All right, so that's number five, Quick Mask by mistake. Number six. Stuff is just grayed out. Now, unfortunately, there's no easy one thing that says, oh, if something's grayed out, do this one thing and that'll make whatever you're trying to do not be grayed out. Some, the fact that something's grayed out usually means that whatever you're trying to do, it's not in the right mode to do it. So for example, if I were to go up to the select menu, well, deselect is grayed out. Well, that's obvious because I don't have anything selected. So that's why I can't deselect. By the way, that's where Command D comes from. I can't reselect. I can't inverse the selection. I can't do any of these things. I can't modify the selection. I can't grow the selection. I can't uh, choose similar pixels. I can't transform the selection. I can't do any of that stuff because I don't have a selection. So that one's pretty self-explanatory. So if I were to go in now and use Quick Select, I always use the wrong tool, use Quick Select and make a selection, now when I go up to select, hey, all of those things that I couldn't do before are there, including edit and quick mask mode. <laughs> um, so if something is grayed out under the select menu, well, that's pretty easy. But what if something is grayed out, let's say, under the, and I deselect it, under the edit menu. So for example, why can't I, why can't under the image menu, why can't I crop? Why, why is crop not available? Does that mean I can't use the crop tool? What does that mean that crop's not available? Well, again, that's another function that requires the image to be in a certain mode in order to do a crop. What crop means is that you've made a it's selection based as well. So like I'll go to my um, hang on, wrong key, there we go. I'll go to my rectangular marquee, I'll make a selection like so. Now, if I go up to image, crop's available because crop requires a selection, even though it's not under the select menu. So that's what I mean by there's no necessarily direct correlation to why something's grayed out. If it's grayed out, it's either the image is not in the right 
mode or the right, um, there's no, nothing going on for it to do whatever it is you're trying to do, or there's a selection or non, or doesn't have a selection. So for example, now if I were to choose crop, it crops it to that selection. And even though I wasn't on the background layer, the layer of zero, the original layer, crop is crop. It crops the entire image. So it cropped all the layers. Didn't matter that I wasn't necessarily selecting the background image layer. All right, so let's undo that. Let's deselect Command D and um, stuff's grayed out. So again, just check whatever it is that's grayed out. Think about what you're trying to do and what would be required for that function to work and therefore why it would be grayed out. So for example, if I were to change the mode to, well, let's say I want to change the mode. Here's another one that's, gray, that's always grayed out. Bitmap. Now we don't use bitmap that much anymore, but bitmap means the image will be converted to black and white. It will look very pixelated. It will look very 1990s. It will be black and white. But why can't I choose bitmap? Because bitmap goes way back to the 90s. In order for an image to be in bitmap, you have to get rid of the color first. It won't just go straight to bitmap. How do we get rid of the color first? Change the mode to grayscale. It'll say, do you want to merge layers because some of these layers have color? They'll say yes. Now it's grayscale. And now if I go to image mode, bitmap's an option because I got rid of the color first. So depending on what's, yes, I want to flatten layers. Depending on what's grayed out, and yes, I want to do it this way. Um, it, will, it will be grayed out because the image is not in the right mode. So in this case, bitmap couldn't be chosen because it was a color image, it was 8-bit or 16-bit color, and it has to be grayscale, losing all the color first before it will go from grayscale to black and white. It's just an old function that requires, it can't go straight from color to bitmap. All right, undo, undo, undo. Um, next up, and this is, this is one that still catches me to this day. I, I'm trying to do something like, um, well, let's let's talk about. I want to I wanted to give you another masking example. Well, I can use the same one. Let's let's use a masking example. Let's but let's pick something else. Let's go back to that. Uh, let's go back to this image. Let's drag in another copy of it. So all I'm doing is just making a, a duplicate of that image without the mask. So now I got the one on top without the mask. And let's say I go in and I want to do a quick select of this, the stuff in the mirror. Okay, great. Or the mirror itself. And let's get a little bit more of that. Okay, great. I got the mirror. And now I want to add a mask. So I'm going to hold down my shift key. No, I'm going to not hold down shift key or option key. I'm just going to go ahead and add the mask. Okay, I got the mask. Now we already know paint in white, it will give you more of the car. Paint in black, it will give you less of the mirror. We already know that. We've seen it several times today. So if I go to my brush, I'm on the mask. I start painting in white. I am now getting back more car or more scene. I paint in black. I'm now hiding more of the mirror, and I'd probably want to use a hard edge brush for this. Let's undo, undo, and let's go to our brushes, and let's go to a hard edge brush. There we go. There we go. So now I can, like, really, for this mechanical thing, I can really get a nice hard edge. Okay, great. But what happens when it's not hiding or bringing back full strength? What that usually means is, the opacity of your brush was turned down because you were doing something that you didn't want to do it at full strength. So if I go in and I say, hey, only give me, you know, 16% and now I'm trying to hide it. Well, it's not hiding the whole thing. It's hiding pieces of it. It's hiding 16% of it. That's because the brush is not painting at 100% black. It's painting in a gray. So if we were to go look at the mask right now, that's what the mask would look like. So black all around where it's really hiding something. Gray where it's only showing part of it because of the transparency of the brush. So if that happens, meaning that you're painting and it's not, it's like taking you several like strokes to get it where you want it to be. Check the opacity of the brush to make sure you're painting at 100% or whatever you want to paint at so that you get 
full strength of the brush. Um, so, for example, if I switch it back to 100, and then I go in and paint, hey, now it's completely disappearing the way it's supposed to. And if I go back to white, it's completely bringing it back the way it's supposed to because I'm painting at 100% of that brush. Okay, so that was number seven. So I covered my seven things, but I got one bonus one for you. Um, once again, let's get rid of our mask. Let's, let's bring back the whole image there. And uh, what I wanna do is I wanna talk about uh, the shape tool. Because the shape tool is really cool, it's really useful inside of Photoshop, but people get tripped up because they don't necessarily check to see what they're creating with it first. So for example, um, if they go in and they grab the custom shape tool, great, they get all these wonderful, great shapes. But before you worry about what shape you want to create in your image, the first thing you need to look at is over on the left-hand side, what you're creating, because you have three choices. You could be creating a shape, which is usually what you want, or a path, which probably is not what you want, or pixels, which could be what you want. It depends on what you're trying to do. So for example, if I create a new layer, new layer, there we go, create a new layer, and I'm on a shape um, shape function with the shape tool and I go in and I say, hey, I would love to have this ribbon. And I now go out and drag out the ribbon. Great. And I'm in red, so I'm going to get a nice red outlined white ribbon. Um, that's fantastic. And you notice that I have all my points. I can reshape it, resize it, um, do whatever I want to do and I can get out of it and I can move it around because I put it on its own layer and it's vector and it's great and I can turn it, tilt it. I can still go in and tweak it. I can do whatever I want to do with this ribbon and get it the way I want. Perfect. That's because it's a shape and it creates a shape layer when you do that. So if I were to create another new layer and I were to go in and go to that same tool, but I didn't check it first and I go to change the pixel or switch it to pixels and I create it, it's going to look the same. It's going to act the same. But now what I've just done is I don't have a shape layer. I just have white pixels on a layer. So this is not vector. This is resolution dependent now. It's not, I can't use the pen tool to reshape it and resize it and do whatever I want. It's, it's, it is what it is. I can scale it because I can scale any layer. Great. I can move it around. It's got transparency. Great. But it lost its quality of being a vector shape. So again, that depends on what you want. If you want it, pixels, great. That's what you got. But if you really were after a vector shape, then you want to make sure it's on shapes. And last but not least, if I were to do the same thing, but on a path, and I were to drag it out, I don't get the fill. I don't get anything. I just get a path. Um, a path that disappears because that path is on the path's layer where it belongs. So it's, in other words, you're not creating pixels. You're not creating vectors. You're creating a what ultimately could be turned into a selection. So this is useful. For example, let me go back to my layers. If I were to create, I'm on, uh, let me create a new layer first. So I still have that path. I'm on layer number two now. And I were to go back to the paths panel and I were to double click that work path and name it and then use that work path to make a selection. Now I've got a selection in the shape of that ribbon. So if I were trying to fill that in with another image, if I were to go to my, um, my, let me just open up another image here just to show it. There we go, open up this other image, copy it. Switch back, and I'm on layer number two still with that selected, and I were to do a paste into, then it will paste it into that layer, and you're like, well, wait, that's all I see is white. It's still there, but it's just really big, so let's scale it down. And now we can see it as we're moving it around in that layer. And so somehow I selected just a mask of it. But anyway, 
uh, depending on what you're trying to do, that may or may not give you what you want. So for example, shapes, probably what you're looking for, or um, pixels could be what you're looking for. Rarely are you looking for a path because paths would be, like I said, for selections. All right, so um, with that said, those are the seven most common things with a couple bonus ones that people run into every single day uh, that they end up stuck or it doesn't work or they're, they're clicking around and they're painting and nothing's happening. They're trying to use a tool and it's not working. Usually because something's selected, Photoshop's not in the right mode, the layers, the background, and not a layer, so forth and so on. So just keep those things in mind before you move on. Command D. Before you move on, check the tool settings to make sure it's 100% opacity, normal. Before you move on, make sure that um, the image is in the right mode for whatever it is you're trying to do. And those will usually quickly get you out of the situation you're in. And most, like I said, most common, Command D will solve 90% of it. The other ones, depend. you can get into these weird situations where you hit a key by mistake or you grab the wrong setting or wrong selection of a layer so forth and so on, but or the wrong setting of a filter. But more, more than likely than not, it's because something's selected. So just keep those things in mind. All right, gotta love that bitmap. <laughs> Gonna give it a thrash. Yeah, bitmap is like literally from Photoshop 1. Like it's it's been around for a long, long time. And I'm very, very rarely used. But you could make a comeback. You could bring bitmap back these days. All right, so with that said, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. Happy Earth Day. And we will catch you on the next one. Tomorrow is InDesign. Uh, do I... Oh, sure. I, I'll do that, Andrew. I'll set one up for you guys. Um, and we'll catch you tomorrow on InDesign Tuesday. Cheers, everybody.